<laughs> yes, no, I don't. Um, you have, uh, do feel feel free in these situations to record, but yeah, um, no, I should. I want to just do it all the time. So yeah, because that's that's the idea. So yeah, so I, I think we'll, and I'm okay with sort of molding this the topics as we get them. So that's very good. But what what, what you got that um, uh, as provides enough of a foothold for the things that I'd be trying to say. Yeah. So then, so then from there, and then to the last two are really about tiddlywinky. Yes. Yes. And, and it's good to have that as the first. So what's, what's under hypertext in the wild? Hypertext in the wild is my, is the introduction. And what I want to do is introduce the concept of hypertext and suggest that when people use almost anything, they're engaging with hypertext. Okay. So, so if we wanted to phrase it with hypertext, not as the first world word, um, it's something like uh, you already know hypertext. But yeah. um, so that's interesting. What's the, the what's the idea of not using hypertext as the first word? Because it's the least. Um, because you're making a list of things that are all about hypertext. So the thing that's important is the other thing that's in each statement, um, and. Yeah. Yeah, and so by putting that at the front, then you encourage people to make a comparison between those leading concepts. Yeah. Um. He says drinking more wine. Remember, it is the evening for me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll work on that. Um, I like hypertext in the wild, again, because there is some... I mean, I like the notion of the word wild because I want to get the sense that it's out there. Um, and I have to, I'll figure out a way to phrase that. Um, um, I think, I think I stole that term from somebody. Stalking the wild hypertext, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, um, I agree. Uh, the. But, but the point that you're making, and you can make the point definitely under that heading, is um, is that it's or is that they already know it. It's kind yeah. of is that, that you're reassuring them that um, this isn't the study of something arcane um, in the domain of computer scientists. It's a part of their everyday lives, um, and. There we go. Something like that almost. Yeah, but it's the wild, but it's also in the cozy, in the wild of our cozy domestic lives, um, in the wilds of our pockets. Um, these, are, these are not helpful <laughs> comments. Dude. But, um, but yes, but, uh, um, but, but, but uh, so it's, it's, it's almost like past tense because it's something that they've done. Not, so, not an exhortation that they can go out and have this experience, but that the chances are that um, uh, it's, it's as if you're anticipating their deja vu, um, that, um, uh, that it might. Yeah, okay, I'll, um, I'll play with that. Have fun. Um, it reminds me, I think of it in, how interesting it must be to teach something like um, film studies, because you know we're we're all bloody film students sit there and um, um, make sarky comments in our heads about movies, um, and I, I'm you know I'm lucky to teach a subject that by its nature is sort of is sort of arcane, and here this is something that um, is apparently arcane. But actually, they already know it, both because hypertext is everywhere, but also because hypertext is an attempt to mirror the human brain in some sense. And so um, I've often talked, I think, about how people find TiddlyWiki familiar. Um, uh, but I think that's a special case of finding hypertext, a sort of familiar notion. Um, okay. So, that's, so the idea that these seven talks would be um, about an hour, maybe less, 40, 35 minutes, 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. And what I want to do, oh, this is weird. Huh. Um, someday I'll have to figure out why that, why that defaults to that. I don't know why. Um, and the idea is I want to run through a series of slides built into the wiki, of course, in this space. Um, 
and tie it to some of the literature that I'll have been asking people to read. Um, and then they're going to use these 35, 45 minutes or so as the instructional materials for the course that goes with the reading. So we're going to, and so I will have, um, and what I was hoping that we could do is essentially what we're doing now is just bounce off of ideas. And um, I'm going to see, take it as my task to somehow come to understand and bring your discussions down to a level that my students will get. And so, and, and presumably that's through the happy medium of discourse. I mean, one, absolutely. You know, in, in, in a way, you know how you could approach it. Um, it's as if um, you could imagine a five minute conversation between the two of us mm -hmm. um, that actually covered the entire course, um, if you, you see what I mean, and that um, what we would then do to make that approachable to students would be to slice it up um, and, and, and explain it. But that one could use the, that conversation as the starting point um, for the, the, the sort of journey of discovery of what would be interesting to teach. So in a sense, what we'll do is, in a five-minute conversation, is we'll walk through these topics yeah, using, oh. using our familiar code names and saying, yeah, like Blenkinsop's work. Um, and maybe that'll be untransmittable. Um, but um, anyway, I think, I think maybe, maybe that, that deserves further thought. The main, uh, I think if I'll allocate, if at the moment, if we did something like three o'clock tomorrow afternoon, my time which is three which is yes 10, 10 p.m 10 a.m <laughs> your time but i think i could be i could do it an hour earlier or an hour, hour later okay I, think, I can't go much i can't go an hour later but an hour that's actually that works the perfect time if that works for you 3 p.m yeah. my time yeah. okay so then so let's schedule the time okay. and record what happens um like a jamming session mm -hmm. not that I, I don't i would i would vigorously reject this analogy for what we're doing there um bigger yeah but um and go back to go back to your topics again yep awesome so i mean i imagine in terms of involvement there's a bunch of stuff in the penultimate chapter um, that um, it would be fun to do To I mean, are you thinking that I would take a, the same kind of role in each of these, or would you think that you'd be finding other guests to get into other parts? No, I, I mean, I'm hoping if you're up for it that, that you would essentially take the role in each of these, the same, okay. because otherwise I think the, the – because what we'll have built then, if, if when this is successful, is we'll have you know three, four hours or five hours of content that will be very interesting for people coming to Tiddly Week and coming to Hypertext, but something that's familiar and sequential. Because um, the I mean um, that makes perfect sense. But but um, just thinking about it, I mean one of you, I think you reached out to Ward Cunningham on Twitter. Didn't you? I haven't yet. Are you um, going to? And, I, I mean, and if we get other people to come in, like if, and I actually have a, 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 a connection to Ted Nelson that I didn't know I had. And, and so if they come, then we'd add them in and then that would be great. Because <laughs> particularly Ward, I think I mentioned before, he, he does his weekly talks on a Wednesday and you literally just need to look out on Twitter and join in. And I've, I've been in a couple of those a long time ago now. Okay. Um, but uh, I, I, th I think it would be, it would make it really rich. I mean, to make yes. it richer to have um, other perspectives, but I'd be happy to do anything. Okay. Well, um, so, I mean, if we get others, then we will. I've, I'm a little late in getting it organized. The, but, the, um, the, the other person I know who I'm sure would be really happy to help is a guy I used to work with um, at the investment bank where he was in my team when we simultaneously first discovered wikis. And he now is... Um, uh, he, he's, he lives in Southeast Asia and he's started a company called Slim Wiki. Um, and it's quite interesting if you pull it up because it's, it's a bit retro that 
it's a um, uh, it's a very old school idea of a product, you know, but obviously cloud based. It's a very two thousand and three era deploy a wiki and all this good stuff will happen, and it's presented in in a quite a modern way, which none of the um, old school wikis are. Um, and um, so Yan, um, who uh, the guy who started it, just might be quite interesting because he's got you know he. I think his perspective is that he loves wikis, mm -hmm. um, uh, and um, but I think his decision to build, he they build mobile apps for banking clients and all okay. kinds of dull stuff. So I think this is partly his um, pitch for something independent. Um, but it is partly him trying to, he genuinely, st still working with corporates, genuinely thinks wikis are a good thing for them. And so he might have thoughts on, on that, on wiki um, adoption, that kind of thing, on the fact that there is still life in them as a, as a kind of corporate phenomena. And given that academia is condemned to use corporate cast-offs like the rest of humanity. <laughs> Uh, he's called Jan Jones, J A N J J O N E S. Okay, so I'll, and um, the other guy that is still around, and I have some connection with him that I can tap on potentially is George Landau, who's the scholar who wrote the. Oh yes, yeah. he's, he's around. Thank you. And then I think you know if we could get Ted Nelson on camera, that would just be kind of nice. Um, yeah, and a very old friend of mine that we just reestablished contact. He works at the Internet Archive, and there's apparently a Friday morning San Francisco-based talk that happens every week that Ted Nelson shows up at routinely. So that would be fun. Um, and then the other part that let so I just say that in the other part that I wanted to just run by you because I know it's getting late um, was the idea of sort of the exercises and that the the because the, I have to think of a um of tasks for people to do and I don't think I've yeah. that well yet um but I'm beginning to um so it's still I think I've still got it mostly in the spreadsheet um oh do I not have them no I do have them in the wiki sorry um come on um so I've got these, what I'm calling these basics. Um, and, and, and this is, you know, I've taught it a number of ways. And um, these are the easy ones. And I, want, I don't want students to do all of them, but some of them, you know. So basically, you just start with a spreadsheet and bring it in as a set of tiddlers. Because I find that people get spreadsheets before they get tiddly wiki. Um, and then... Um, I, I build these things that I call notes and quotes, um, which is you basically do a literature review. And since they're reading, they'll use it for their own work. They, you know, you create an author, you tap on it, and, and then you build ideas of that author. And then they, it builds up a literature review, what the literature review for them. Um, I've built a, um, a spreadsheet model. Um, which I, which shows how they, um, I have to get the import at CSV working for that to work. But I, okay, but it, but, but it rows and spreadsheets are yes. tiddlers and they've got relationships. Yes, and that they see that, and then they have a body of tiddlers to work with. And the other one that I love, which is kind of crazy, I don't know if you know the green eggs and ham. Oh, I know the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, there's only 50 words in the whole story. Um, and it makes for a pretty interesting tiddly wiki where each line becomes a tiddler, the whole thing is a tiddler, each word is a tiddler, and then it, they can completely reinterpret what that means. And it's just fun for students, and it's enough that they can, they can all, it's only 50, so they can hand code it. Um, you know, so you don't have to import a body of tiddlers. But I, they need, I, I, my sense is that students need to have a bunch of, a bunch of things to work with to get started before they understand relationships. And I have found that that works better than, than the alternative, which I've seen in a lot of other professors use, which is they start with a blank and they'll build like a family tree and build those relationships. 
but they never, it's not enough to see relationships when they do that. So I find that yes. Okay. So I like the spreadsheet relationship thing. I, um, I wonder, you, you, I was wondering whether you could even take it further, that there are some tasks that people might be familiar with doing in a spreadsheet that are actually better in Diddlywiki. Mm -hmm. And you could get them to compare that task. And then as you keep loading plates up onto them, you'd get them to the point where the task falls apart in Excel, but excels in Tiddlywiki. Yes. And that's so with, with task, task management, I was going to think with, with, as an example, because, you know, the, there's the task management stuff in Tiddlywiki.com. Yeah. It can be simplified into a macro so that students can understand what you need to type to make it work because mostly it's about the tags obviously um but and then you could the things would be things like show, um, making different lists with different combinations of tags visible these are the t uh, tasks that i can do at home that are not done these are the tasks i can do at work that are not done that kind of thing it should be a little bit more difficult to do in excel but i think as i was thinking about that that Actually, the strength of the task that you've got is they're very focused on the wiki tech, uh, on the core hypertext wiki functionality, not the application building functionality. Yes. But then it made me think that perhaps what you could do is expose some of the, well, basically, when I do, I do a similar sort of route like this in a way. Um, but I use missing and orphans very strongly in that early part of the talk. So I show them making tiddlers and making links, list, links to tiddlers that don't exist, then creating a target tiddler. And then I show them the missing and orphans, by which time there will be both, and how you can then click on a missing tiddler, fill it, it disappears from the missing list. And the, I guess what I like about that is you're progressively revealing the capabilities of the tool through the exercises. So I think you, you are, um, oddly, you might be on the right track by putting the exercises in a spreadsheet because part of getting that sequence right might well be kind of thinking about the, um, the, the, the gradual disclosure of, um, you know, careful disclosure of progressively useful bits of knowledge. Um, and the thing I like about teaching missing and orphans is that actually then you're showing the, the kind of, what is it? The distinctive functionality of TiddlyWiki, you know, if, it, if it's a machine, if it's a tool that you're learning how to use, links is absolutely first part, but that it's a sort of the next stage after the links. So I think there's, there's, stand, there's treating TiddlyWiki as standalone tiddlers, just here's a pile of index cards, and that's useful because we can search. Then there's links, then um, there's missing and orphans, then there's tags, um and i guess i'd be trying to fit the exercises into the the gradual disclosure of those tasks um yes and i think of link i'm sure we talked about this but links tags and search as being these i'm sure we've had this conversation steve but this being these orthogonal the three axes um for browsing through content um, and and the, the 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 distinction between the three, I think, is quite important. That you know who's in control. Um, so links and tags are created by authors, but navigated by readers. And search is, in a sense, created by the reader because you can search for whatever you like. Um, but so, and you need to pick an order. So it's um, uh, and obviously that's why you go links, tags. Well, possibly even link search and then tag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, because it's funny because I, 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 I don't teach. I haven't thought of search as something to teach because it's it's there, and that's interesting. And, and it's ubiquitous for them. But but, but I guess the perhaps the, the sense in which you teach it is it's the starting point 
that you can compare the other these other um, axes of navigation to um, because search, um, you know, search is the familiar one where say you are in control you identify what you're looking for you're told instantly whether what you wanted is there or not and you get no information about what the author thought was important or anybody else you know it's just your um what's that word um you know that your 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 um, selfish um pursuit of your own um you know, yeah, under your own terms um so and i wonder whether i like the excel thing um and we've certainly must get that bulk import um done um yeah, i think i have I, I wonder about it's a very specific idea here, but um, if you are really smart, when you're there's basically there's going to be a period when you're working on this data in Excel, and then they're going to make the transition and dump the data into TiddlyWiki. Is how we're visualising yes. it, um, and because they're dumping a whole load of data, it's going to be immediately useless. Like moving into a school that's already got children in it, um, and I. Uh, what would be really interesting would be if you could evolve a plausible way to instruct them inside the spreadsheet to use wiki text to represent links. And I have done that. And then, yeah, yeah. And then it works when they do the, because then that, that you're somehow, you're suggesting that wiki text is a first principle thing about the easiest way to express editorial intention whilst you're typing. Um, uh, and that wikis is just an implementation of that intention. And so um, the way that I've done that, um, uh, um, I, I, I'm not going to be able to show it here, but I, I, um, um, is I'll teach a, um, something like that in spreadsheets. So they end up generating cells that combine the com the, the row title and the, the, the row title and the column title into these, these um, combination. Okay. And then when they paste that in, this is a, this becomes a tiddler because of the Nate, because of the, the way that, that they, Bridget. So, mm -hmm. and it's a, as opposed to something like, um, as opposed to putting the brackets in. So they generate, we, yes. you know, with this formula, um, which is kind of intriguing. I guess as soon as you do that, you make me um, appreciate the, the kind of, what's the word, the distinction between um, two quite critical but different ways of using camel case. One is exactly like that, where the words are different notches on axes, mm -hmm. um, and the other is where they're a concatenation of words that um, you know represent a phrase or a um, you know path through a hierarchy. That's what I mean. You know, the world, Europe, Britain, Oxford, right. that stuff. Um, um, and so that makes me want to then think how you'd represent those other ways of doing camel case in a spreadsheet situation. And in fact, it's easy. Um, you could have a column heading um, that was the concatenation of all of the rows. So Jim, Bob, Sue, yep. um, uh, and then concatenate those together. Um, anyway. Yeah, I, can't I, guess. How, I did that with U.S. presidents or something like that. I'll have to go back and do it, but it, it, it kind of worked. Um, but what I want to do is... Aren't I, you going to have to teach them saving, first of all, Steve? What's that? Aren't you going to have to teach them saving, first of all? Well, that's in getting started. This is, that's the, um, there's a whole getting started module. That's the first week where they have to download, they have to, and there's a, um, and it's a little complicated, I think. Um, let me see, it's in the, um, so I, I mean, these are the pieces of software that I want them to have. Um, 
So that's quite a bit to get them going, but Dropbox, Firefox, Sheets, Jing, Tiddlywiki, and Zoom. Um, and that's not going to seem too much like pointing out the fire exits before the nightclub starts, is it? Yeah, it, it, it may be. I just don't know a way around it. Um, Everybody has. Sheep. I guess. I guess the, the. I guess one thing is to. Yeah, exactly. Is to do the easy ones yeah. and to and to make them not all be necessary right at the beginning. Right. Jing. Jing comes much later. That's only for importing images. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and in fact, you can. Yeah, the things. The only things that you're asking them to do anything unusual with is actually. Um, Tiddly wiki and maybe Dropbox and maybe Jing, but I mean, there's nothing in spreadsheets that you're asking them to do they haven't done before. No, exactly. And but they, you know, for Firefox, they need Firefox. They need yeah. Firefox. Yeah. Um, I, That's I, all. I will probably dump the scrapbook extension. I don't think we're gonna. I'll have time to get into that. Um, hmm. and, and that's really not necessary. For, for the so I've got these sort of getting dues and I can't remember what we did in Dropbox. Um, it's kind of interesting. I think that Dropbox has changed, and mm. you can't. Um, I've been used to referencing images and serving them directly out of Dropbox from a public folder, and you can't do that anymore unless you're a pro subscriber. As far as I can yes, see. yes, that's yeah. correct. And I don't know if you subscribe to Pro and then drop it back down if you keep that public folder or not. Um, I, as I, I thought you still got the public folder as a grandfathered user, but I'm a paid user, so yes. I do have it. As and a I grandfathered do. user, but as a new user, if you become Pro and then... Then you, then, you, then, you, then you don't have it. But what you do have instead um, is the ability to make a Dropbox link as described on tiddlywiki.com and the difference with that technique on, on tiddlywiki.com is that you only get the, the URL you get only allows access to a single file um, so that means that you can't link to external images or anything like that um, but so this technique doesn't re doesn't require you to have a public folder you can put it anywhere and, and so it's actually, it's a rather unique TiddlyWiki feature that it's, um, oh, and you, yes, there's a little gadget there that does all the magic. I'd that. Um, uh, so it couldn't be easier, in fact. Um, but how do you do the images? So that means it only works with images that are embedded in the TiddlyWiki. Right. So if, you're, if your users are on a fast network, then who cares? If they're not on a fast network, then you need to invest in image magic to compress your images. But no, I mean, it, it, you could also put the images on another service entirely, like Flickr, for instance. Um, and, and I believe that Flickr, you can get an embeddable URL that you know, allows you to hot link to the image. I think you can too, but it's a little trickier. Um, you can also generate that same URL style. You can do a share, share link in Dropbox to generate a link for the image. Yeah, but that's that's very a pain in the neck. Yeah, um, and, and I may just tell people. You, you'll, you, you, you'll also see that if you, I, I can't quite remember the details, but if you share a folder, so the instructions that on tillywiki.com there were for sharing a um uh were for sharing a file but if you share a folder instead it may be possible to um uh, then the the url um you see how that the url there has got my wiki.html at the end i think the urls do allow you to reach the other files in the folder if you generate the link to the folder I so we should do some investigation on that yeah, I don't think so, but maybe you're right. I, I was, I, I've run into that problem with some new users and it's like, it just simply depends. But then, but then just, uh, I mean, within reason, just once one lets go, a 10 megabyte Tiddly Wiki is fine. You know? And for somebody who's kind of under instruction to read the bloody thing, <laughs> it's completely fine. Oh, you mean just, for, import, for insert, for just bringing the images in? Yeah. I mean, and especially if you're careful, um, if you know your way around a tool 
that's good at compressing PNGs, you can make um, bitmaps um, remarkably small, you know, and, and often for our kind of instructional images, um, you know, you slap, you slap an iPhone screenshot and it's four megabytes, but you can compress it to, you know, 20K if you, um, uh, if you take a bit of trouble with it. Yeah, not, my students don't do that. Um, and Say again? They don't do that and they don't know that. And so getting them to do that. Oh, no, so the student, oh, so no, if the students need to embed the images, then, well, I mean, there are, basically you can instruct them to make it be a small image. Well, this is, this is my workflow right now. So here's my Jing. Um, and this is the one that I'm, oops, that's, yeah. um, so it's equivalent to something called Sketch that I used to use, yes, I think. Which I think is now dead. <laughs> yes, Evernote bought it and killed it. <laughs> yes, um, I was just looking for alternative. So I'll just, you know, make a quick jing, um, save it. I save it in TW Save, you know, and I'll teach them that. Um, I think I have to save it in the right spot. Um, we but you, 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 you know that built into OS 10 on the Mac is, is there's a built in thing that does almost the same thing. But it doesn't do this as far as I know. Um, which my students typically appreciate. Um, come on, new tiddler. Um, so it it's just a paste by saving, but it, Jing and Jing has the feature that you can create a, um, you can create, so I have Jing write the code that they then paste into their wiki with the image name. Yeah, so I mean the, the, the built-in OS 10 one, the workflow um, would be that you, you'd use the key combination that saves the portion of the screen to a file, mm -hmm. um, and then you'd attach that file, import that file. Um, and if it's a, depending on what they need to take the screenshots of, if it's a small region of the screen, those aren't too ridiculous. But, um, but yes, I think, I think that the optimum would be to figure out a Dropbox folder, yeah. a way for, and it yeah. may be that once you register as a pro user, you get a public folder, and when you drop down from pro to free, they don't take your public folder away. <laughs> uh, for the optimists, it's possible. It's certainly possible. Yeah, or I, I don't necessarily mind if they pay the $10 a month for four months. That's not terrible. There's no textbook for the course. But some of them won't do it. And, you know, at, at the images, are well, here, it's really about the wood. As I say, the, I think the the other plausible way to do it is what I mean. I'm not sure what else Jing does, but um, it probably will let you upload to Image Year or somewhere like that, won't it? Or TwitPic. Um, you, you can upload it to anywhere. Yeah. Um, so get, so, so get, get a TwitPic URL back and embed that, maybe, and then ones off the Dropbox. Um, yes. Yeah, and that would that that that, that would work too. Um, it's just Jing is nice because it will save it right in the Dropbox folder, and then there's no there's no sync required, there's no movement, there's no nothing. It's the clean. I guess. I, um, yeah, I get your point, but the it's the Dropboxy part it, um, does betray um, you know our file system -y way of thinking about the LeWiki and in a way the webbier ways of doing it of finagling an online service um, that might actually be more familiar to some people and the file stuff in a way is um, uh, is less helpful to the hypertext story than the idea of here we're striping these resources all over different services on the internet, Google Sheets, um, TwitPic, and then we're aggregating these things together in TiddlyWiki in a, in a way that is plastic, that we can rearrange those parts, you know, to Good point. represent yes. Okay, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, so I, I, yeah, I can go either way with that. Um, 
I'll look at I'll look uh, at something like a twit pick or something like that. Well, well, I think what that suggestion is contingent on the idea that Jing has a equally easy facility for automatically doing an upload. And I know like my Twitter client does. You just paste an image, and by the time it gets posted, it's been uploaded to the TwitPic on your behalf. Yeah. Um, so it could it could t tap into um, to, to the extent that people. So in fact, as a workflow, tweet this, yes. tweet your images, <laughs> and then paste your paste the universal idea of the tweet. Anyway, um, Steve, I should buzz off, and so let's. Um, uh, I think we, we, we left it at three o'clock. I'll put that in the diary, but, but let's speak before then. As I say, at the moment, I've got flexibility, so we can um, change that if we need to. Okay, that sounds good. And I think this will be, um, I'm still pretty excited. I'm going to put an announcement out by, if not tomorrow, then by Monday to the community. I'm going to put it in the TiddlyWiki group. I think I'm going to start another, the last thing I wanted to run past you, just to give you an idea, I'm going to start another Google group for this particular community instead of using the tiddly wiki google group because um but that way this the registered students so the 25 that are that are paying for the course and the a dozen half dozen or more who who join the open course will use that google group and and i'm going to announce it in the tiddly wiki group and invite some of the new folks or any of the folks to join us but i want those I want people comfortable to ask very simple questions, which I don't think they would be willing so you, to. No, that makes sense. And so you're thinking this would be a private group or a members only group? Um, anybody can read, members only can write. Um, okay. Just, I, the, I, the only thoughts I have about that is when, when I occasionally look at my list of subscribed Google groups, and it's not something you see sort of accidentally. Um, I, it is littered with groups that were set up as the, you know, as the residue of relatively short-lived projects. Um, and I wonder whether if one is going to set up another space, we might want to consider making it private. And the only thought there is, is because we're making public resources with TiddlyWiki. And so it's possible that the, the scaffolding you know behind the endeavor to create those things might benefit just from you know because there's not much community um going to be and i don't know maybe i'm uh, sorry steve but i think what i'm saying is may not be may not, not even be what i think which suggests that it's probably too late for me to be trying to think but you know i i don't really know what we what how this all sort of unfolds but the sense in which if you're worried about people in the group looking stupid by asking simple questions, then it's it's quite courteous to keep that in to, in a in a private environment, especially if we uh, as part. It'll come back. There are oh, Steve. <laughs> yeah. so I thought that was probably God's way of saying I could go to bed, Jeremy. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll think about so Steve, I'll see you at three o'clock. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. We, we we shouldn't get too hung up on the admin stuff. I'm yeah. sure there's um, it's it's not where the dangerous mistakes lie. I'm sure. Okay, so excellent. Um, I'll look forward to speaking to you tomorrow, Steve. Excellent. Take care. Anything. Thanks. Yep.